Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bill Hamilton, country boy from Old Hickory, Tennessee, coming back to you again. Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to speak to you about the story of the water tower. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know, you've been all around America. You've been in small towns and large towns I have, and I'm sure you have as well. And there's something that you have not paid very much attention to at all. No matter how small the town you go into, it might be so far back out in the boonies that they have to pipe sunlight out there. Yet, every one of them have a water tower. You may have been in Manhattan with all of the tall buildings, skyscrapers, and so forth. If you didn't pay any attention, just take a second look, and you'll find that even many of those skyscrapers, on the top of them, they have a water tower. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care whether you are in the largest city in the United States or the smallest country bumpkin town around, you'll find that every one of them will have a water tower. They're so common that you pass by them and you don't even pay any attention to them. Well, Bill Hamilton, I mean, what's this all about? I mean, what's the big deal? It's a water tower. Well, <laughs> glad you asked. Have you noticed that, uh, for example, uh, during a power outage, an emergency, a big, big storm in town when the lights go off, uh, have you noticed that if you would go to the sink and turn the water on, that the water is still running? <laughs> you ever ask yourself why? Have you noticed that the internet connection goes out and you can't even get on your computer, uh, but you turn the faucet on and the water is on. Ever ask yourself why? Hmm. Have you noticed that when cable and satellite goes out, big, big major emergency, uh, you turn the faucet on and there is the water. Uh, the water is on. In a hurricane, lights out, everything's out, but turn the water on and the water is there. Hmm, wonder why. Well, <laughs> glad you ask. Ladies and gentlemen, the answer for that is because of the water top. That's right. This little item here, ladies and gentlemen, that every large and every small town has, let me tell you how it works. It works like this. The water tower in your city or in your town, uh, if it's a hilly area, it might be on the tallest hill in town. But in most cities and in most towns, it's erected like this. It's raised far above the ground. And in fact, in many cities, there will be multiple water towers. The purpose of the water tower is this. It works by water pressure. In other words, it's raised off the ground high enough such that gravity, because of gravity, it can supply water to that whole town or that whole area for approximately one day, it's calibrated that way, approximately one day's worth of water can be supplied if all of the power goes out everywhere and this water tower takes care of it. An average swimming pool, for example, uh, maybe 20, 30,000 gallons of water. The water tower in your community, ladies and gentlemen, will be 50 to 100 times that size, able to accommodate the water needs of that city or that town or that area for approximately one day. Hmm, that's why even when the power goes out, you see, gravity didn't go out. So can you say reliability? Your water is always there, reliability. Power goes out and a fire takes place in town. The fireman can still go to the fire hydrant and get plenty of water, as you well know, out of the fire hydrant because the water pressure is there. Reliability, even in an emergency, reliability. Uh, another reason for a water tower. Ladies and gentlemen, when you get up in the morning, seven o'clock, the entire city begins to wake up uh, you turn on the faucet, you brush your teeth, you go to the kitchen, the bathroom, and so forth. The huge water surge takes place in the city. Well, you might not know it, but the pumps 
that pumps water uh, to your houses in the city is usually calibrated such that it can't handle that kind of demand. It's not set up to handle demand at peak periods. It's set up to handle demand at average level periods. So in the evening when you come home and everybody's watering their lawn, da 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 da, okay, the, 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 the demand for water goes way up. But the pump for the city, for the town, is not calibrated that way. Well, that excess water, where does it come from? I'm glad you asked. It comes from the water tower. Anytime the city exceeds its need for water, then the pumps can produce. The excess water comes from the water tower. And at night, when demand goes down, when most people are asleep, then those same pumps refill the water tower. That's how the water tower works. Therefore, every city in America has complete peace of mind as it relates to water, particularly during emergency, because of the water tower. Well, Bill Hamilton, all that's good, but what does that have to do with wealth building? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> you see, a lot of folks uh, think that uh, that J-O-B is the primary reason that they are in difficulty in an emergency and don't have enough money. They think it's because they don't make enough money. <laughs> no, I'm here to tell you that the number one problem with non-wealth builders is not that uh, the J-O-B is not supplying enough cash, it's not that the pump for the city is not supplying enough water, is that they don't have a water tower. <laughs> what are you talking about up in here in Bill Hamilton? Every one of you, that's how we get to 10, 10, 80. Every one of you should have a savings account. You should have a major savings account such that 10% of the money that you earn every week and every month goes into your savings and investment account, uh, uh, your, your water tower. <laughs> so that when an emergency comes up, ladies and gentlemen, that your J-O-B cannot satisfy, you are just like every small and large town in America, you can call on the water tower. You can call, ladies and gentlemen, on your emergency account, on your emergency and investment account. That's your problem. You see, many people are putting too much emphasis on the automobile. In fact, in America, ladies and gentlemen, USA Today did a survey and found out that the average person, family in America is paying more than $500 a month for a car note, for a car note. Yet they did a, another study that showed that the average family in America cannot afford a $400 emergency a $400 emergency they can't afford it. You see, when they need to call on water because the power goes out, they don't have $400. They've got to borrow it from a credit card. They've got to borrow it from a friend or a neighbor or the USA Today says some just ignore it altogether. I don't have any water. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go without. I'm just going to die of thirst. Ladies and gentlemen, like every small town and every large town in America, from a wealth building standpoint, every one of you must have a water tower. Well, Bill Hamilton, how much money should I have in my water tower? I'm glad you asked. Let me go back to the automobile, ladies and gentlemen, and let me give you a good example. However much that automobile costs, if you got a $10,000 automobile, you ought to have $10,000 cash in your water tower. If you've got a $30,000 automobile, you ought to have $30,000 cash in your water tower. If you've got a $60,000, dollars $80,000 BMW, Mercedes, Benz, Lexus, you ought to have $60,000, $80,000 in your water tower. Ladies and gentlemen, as I close, I just want you to, every time you see a water tower, I I want that to be a reminder for you that you too must have a water tower. <laughs> this, 
is Bill Hamilton, ladies and gentlemen, country boy from Old Hickory, Tennessee. Take it to the bridge, son. Take it to the bridge, water tower. Ha, ha, ha.